I'm kind of on a road trip back here, getting ready for Indy. What's the uh, feeling like among the team? Yeah, uh, you know, we just keep going. We're uh, getting Shannon and, and Kevin back, uh, which is a big boost for us. They're a big part of not just how we play in the field, but, but our mentality and, and who we are as a team. So it's going to be huge to get them back. Big boost going into, into these next two games, and it's a good, good opportunity to capitalize on some opportunities. Looking at Indy, they've won seven in a row in the league and 11 across all competitions, including against you all in the Open Cup. What uh, kind of a challenge is that, you know, knowing you'll play them less than a month ago? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, the month ago in the Open Cup was a little little different scenario for a couple of reasons, but fantastic team. They're the hottest team in the league right now, a ton of quality all over the field. And in order for us to get a result, we need to be at our best all yeah. over the field for, for 90 plus minutes. What have you guys kind of learned from these last two games? It's the first time you have lost two in a row in a really long time. What, what have y'all taken from them? Yeah, it's not uh, it's not what happens to you, it's how you handle it. It's uh, what we're about. You know, mentality monsters is kind of a, a funny phrase. You know, people people love it when we win, they eat it up. And, uh, you know, it's easy to, to mock or poke fun at it when we lose. Um, but I think the one constant with that phrase is, uh, you know, our ability to stay resilient through through adversity and, you know, our pursuit of excellence. Uh, it doesn't stop just because we've, we've lost a couple games. Our, our north is still clear. Our goals are still clear as ever and still attainable. Eighth in the table doesn't look great right now. Um, but, you know, one win, we're, you know, third place. We got two games within four days. Fantastic, fantastic opportunity going into a, like a four and a half day break, I think it is. So, no, it's uh, it's exciting. It's going to be going to be tough. It's going to be a, a big feat, big big hill to climb, but definitely doable. And you guys have gotten some contributions from some academy players. What have your thoughts been on on those guys? Yeah, I, I think I said it last week, but they got thrown into the deep end, and it's never an easy thing to do uh, as an academy kid to get thrown into a a team who hasn't been getting results at the moment with a condensed schedule, especially you know coming into games eight minutes in when they're not expecting to to get those sort of minutes. Mm -hmm. But I think they've done fantastic giving all the uh, the factors going into it. I think the guys have been fantastic trying to lead them and, and try to get the best out of them as well um, and you know have them control the controllables and you know they, they, they've been great so far. Good. Thanks Mitch. Good. Cool. Uh, oh. uh, just uh, when you think about also uh, you know this what you've seen over the last couple of weeks as well of losing a lot of guys to international play as well. Um, has that has it been the mindset just obviously there's always the talk of being a captain, next guy up, you know, type of thing. Is it is that kind of been the, the talk with the guys, just making sure that just stay focused on what we can control? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had a ton of injuries and the combination of I think it was six internationals, I think four left, but two of those were injured, so it was like something crazy like 10 or 12. Um, so definitely something that we haven't been through. I don't think it's an accurate representation of, of what our team is, you know, that, that shorthanded, but nonetheless, we're, we're pros. We get paid to do this and there are no excuses for, for the results, but next man up is the, the mentality here. And, you know, we can't make excuses. We know that right now we're getting stronger. We're building resilience mentally, physically, as a team becoming closer. We're, we're really going through it with the adversity, um, but the only way through it is forward. And uh, we know once we get everyone back, then we're gonna be flying. Does it also make you a little bit excited that you guys get to go through that adversity to make you guys stronger and yeah. mentally tough? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the year, we knew we were going to go through times like this. And, uh, you know, we said that we were always going to stay committed to each other, to the task, to our goals. And uh, it's easier said than done. Obviously, you know, first couple weeks of preseason, everyone, you know, wants to win a championship. But, you know, th this is the time that we spoke about. And uh, I, I think we're, we're mentally equipped to handle it. And, you know, physically, we just got to take care of our bodies and, and know that that better things are coming, getting stronger, keep improving, and you know, I'm gonna keep moving forward. Come to San Antonio, what have your first thoughts been now that you've got a couple of weeks in? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, you know, great group of guys, great staff. Um, you know, feel like I'm really settling in and you know, kind of thrown into the first two games there. But you know, I love playing, and and you know, I'm here to help out in any way that I can. So yeah. you know, I feel like I'm fitting in really well, and you know, kind of getting acclimated to the weather here, and yeah. and getting acclimated to the guys, and yeah. What was that kind of process like of you sign on Monday and then they say, oh, by the way, we have a game on Wednesday. So what was your kind of mindset on that? Yeah, it was a crazy, it was a pretty crazy weekend for me. Uh, you know, I was in, I was in Tampa at the time when I found out. So I had to fly back to Charleston, move my whole apartment, uh, flew in on that Sunday night, yeah. did all the medical stuff on that Monday morning. They were like, hey, you're going to be playing on Wednesday. And, you know, from that moment, you know, my eyes kind of lit up, you know, that excitement, yeah. you know, got ready and uh, 
yeah, honestly, I was just really looking forward to, you know, yeah. getting in there, playing in front of the fans and, and playing with the guys for the first time. And what was that like, your first game in the uniform is a home game and it's a derby against a rival like El Paso. So just kind of what was your thought process on having your debut be that? Oh, it was amazing. Honestly, I don't, I don't think there's any better introduction to a club mm -hmm. than playing in the home stadium in front of the home fans in a derby game. Uh, you know, I think it's it's a good way to kind of showcase you know the type of player I am and mm -hmm. and you know kind of the willingness I'm going to have for this club and and you know kind of how I'm ready to fight and and just yeah. get right in there. So. So what do you bring to? What are some of your things that you would maybe say you bring to the team? I think I bring a lot of energy, a lot of forward runs, you know, uh, a lot of work rate off the ball. You know, when we don't have the ball, pressing, you know, recovering, getting on guys. And then, you know, when we have the ball just being exciting, you know, 1v1, I really like to drive at players, you know, get balls into the box, shots off. So I think, you know, offensively and defensively, I just, I feel like I bring a lot of energy yeah. and, and some chaos to the game, I'd say. Yeah. What has it been like getting in these last, you know, 10 days or so, just getting to know the other guys on the team? I know there's some that are still out with injury and international duty, so you haven't met everybody. But just what were your first impressions with the other guys? Really good. Uh, you know, it's an easy group to play with. I think, you know, the identity of club, the identity of the club makes it, you know, an easy group of guys to play with. Uh, you kind of know what everybody's going to do, and you know, at this level and, and with the level of these guys, it's it's really easy to just fit in and, and yeah. blend in right off the bat. The team has kind of been a kind of a stretch of the results aren't there, the two losses in a row. What do you think it's going to take, starting with this week at Indy, to kind of start turning the results back to what the team wants? I just think, honestly, staying focused with our mindset, our mentality, and, uh, and our philosophy. Um, you know, sticking to the to the identity of SAFC and yeah. uh, just really taking it to teams. You know, I think if you look at it, you know, the past two games, yes, the results haven't been there, but you know, I know the staff has been really proud of the guys, and you know, me personally, I've been proud of the guys. You know, we're going through a tough stretch here with, you know, limited roster availability and, yeah. and limited guys. But you know, you look at it, we have young academy kids coming in and putting in shifts. Yeah. You know, you have guys coming into the team. You know, first couple games with them, uh, with new groups of guys. You know, playing well. You have guys playing out of position. Everybody's doing their job and and they're working really hard. And you know, I have no doubt that results are going to come if we, yeah. you know, kind of keep this confidence about ourselves and, yeah. you know, almost that, that chip on our shoulder that, you know, we are one of the best in the league. And, you know, if we play like we have been, you know, and we get our numbers back, then yeah. results will start coming. Have you kind of thought in your mind about what if that first goal for San Antonio FC might feel like? Uh, you know, I know, I know it's going to feel amazing when it comes and, you know, I'm pushing for it and, you know, hopefully it comes this weekend. You know, don't want to jinx anything, but, you know, I'm feeling confident, feeling ready. And, you know, I know the squad is too. About um, an opportunity to, um, like Mitch was just mentioning, you know, one win can completely change your your seating of where you guys are on the table. How, I guess, motivating in a way is it for you guys to just think, okay, let's just get one? Yeah, super motivating. Honestly, if you look at that Western Conference table right now, you know, it's up for grabs. You know, we're definitely not out of anything. You know, if anything, we're in a great position right now. And uh, you know, I know the guys are confident. You know, one win can can change everything. And you know. We just string them along after that, and you know, next thing you know, we'll be where we want to be. As you also, I'm sure, have seen that you know adversity is going to make this team, you know, basically stronger. How much have you seen that over the last, you know, couple of weeks, or just over the last couple of games as well, just to see how this team is kind of becoming a little bit more tougher mentally? It's been so evident, you know, just from you know my time around the league, knowing kind of what San Antonio is about, uh, knowing their mentality going into games, and and knowing how mentally strong of a team they are and then you know coming in and just seeing it you know firsthand uh you know tough runs and, and tough schedules and tough times you know really bring people together and that's what it's felt like you know just from my short time here already you know i felt like the groups gelled together and you know we all have that kind of confidence and not arrogance but almost like that chip on our shoulder of things will get better and you know we know that things will get better and i think that kind of brings the team together you know when you suffer together you know you just enjoy the good times that much more well, Alan, you guys uh, hit the road to Indy this weekend. What are your kind of thoughts on where y'all are at the at the moment? Yeah, um, Indy's Indy's a fantastic team. They're on a seven-game winning streak. Uh, for me, is one of the best teams in the league. Um, obviously, a team full of confidence, as they should be when you win seven in a row. Um, they're in their house. It, it's a hostile environment. Uh, the fans there do a good job. Um, difficult conditions, uh, but our guys have a very strong mentality, 
and you know, given the adversity we've gone through, um, seven weeks, it's, it's last seven league games, seven different rosters, having less than 60% player availability, um, legitimate reasons, yeah. but we don't use them as excuses. Our mentality stays the same. Our guys have fought every single game, and that's why I'm proud of them. And we know at some point this injury crisis will pass. Um, we'll get some of our guys back from international duty, um, and, and we're going to be very strong. I think this is this is just uh, you know testing our, our our collective character, and the guys have rose to the occasion. Um, mentality is fantastic in that locker room, and I'm I'm, I'm proud of the guys. Yeah. You guys, y'all played Indy a month ago in the Open Cup. Is there anything from that game y'all can take and kind of use this week? Yeah, again, they, they're they similar. You know, they made one tweak from that game. That game was a 3-4-1-2. This one is more of a 3-5-2. Um, we know they're, they're key players. You, you've got to shut down former SAFC player Cam Lindley. You know, everything is played through him. Jack Blake is, is fantastic. I know most of his goals come from PKs, but in the run of play, he's one of the best. He's got one of the best shots from distance. You have Williams, that's a consistent striker that we've got to manage and shut down. Stanley's leading the league in, uh, in assists and, and services into the box. So we know they're key players. We have a plan in place. Um, you know, we, we, we've got enough to field the lineup and, and we're going to go there and fight and compete and, and hopefully that's enough. You've mentioned the adversity. There's also kind of been a bright spot with getting the academy guys some experience. What have your Most thoughts definitely. been on, on their debuts? Yeah, um, Landry got his professional debut at 15 and he just turned 15. Yeah. Uh, so that was a massive, you know, massive achievement for Landry, but for also the academy staff uh, assisting with his development. And, and then us collectively, we have a commitment and, and confidence in, in our youth players. And, you know, he got his, his debut and, and two of our academy players started the game, yeah. you know, which was, which was massive, yeah. massive for the club, massive for them. It's uh, an experience they'll remember uh, forever. And then with Landry, he also had that call up to the national U15 team mm -hmm. last month. What was your thoughts on that? Yeah, incredibly proud. Anytime you get called up for your national team, it's a, there's a massive sense of pride yeah. um, and also achievement. And, and we shared with him now the hard work begins, right? When you know now you've made it the highest level for, for your age group. Yeah. Now you've um, worked hard and earned an opportunity with the first team. Um, now it's about what you do yeah. with these opportunities and how do you build and we also have to be mindful he's a young kid he's 15 yeah. years old yeah. you, you can't put expectations yeah. you have to build them and, and raise them the proper way yeah. and then you guys the new signing in the recent weeks was Jake LaCava what were yeah. your kind of impressions on him through the first three games he is um, first two, two games, games. So he's only yeah. been two I think he got one training session before yeah. we, we before put him in so. just to, to make sure we had enough players on the field yeah. Um, but he's a player I've recruited uh, and kept an eye and identified probably four years now. I try to get him on loan two different times, once with New York Red Bulls and once with Inter Miami. So somebody I obviously have kept close tabs on and, and continue to watch uh, while he's excelled in, in, in different clubs. Um, and when the opportunity presents itself, we, we jumped on it because he's a, he's a great fit from a team identity and, and a club culture. And you guys kind of in the midst of this road swing what do you think is going to be the biggest key to kind of getting the results back to where y'all want them again um if you look at the first seven games mm -hmm. you know we were we were we had one loss only in the first seven games um in the top four in the standings and then you look at the last seven games well the last seven games is when we've encountered the adversity and yeah. and, and struggling to field a all pro starting 11. um so we know, again, the challenges were there, but the mentality maintained. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I'm proud of the guys. It's easy to, you know, you have legitimate reasons there. Yeah. It's easy to make excuses. Our guys don't make excuses. We fought every game. We probably deserve more in some of these games as well. Um, but we, we just got to get through this moment, uh, continue to work hard because it will pass at some moment. And at some moment we will have close to a full roster. And we're confident the first seven games, the results will be there when, when that's the case. And you'll, you'll hit the woodwork three times in the last two games. Which... Yeah, no, as I said, I think we've earned more. Yeah. Um, no takeaway from the opponent, yeah. but it's soccer. We, we just continue to, to learn, grow, get better. And uh, the guys, again, are incredibly cohesive and mentally very, very strong. So we're, we're very um, optimistic about the future.
coach the shuffling of the lineup the last, I guess, seven know, games. Yeah, seven games, right? Yeah, all seven. Yeah. It was uh, seven different starting lineups. So. You remember yeah. uh, during your time here going through a stretch like that where you've had to adjust and tinker with and just change match to match like that for that long a time? Yeah, there's been some others. Um, I believe in our championship winning season, um, I think in 34 games we had like 33 different starting lineups, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know what, I won't disclose, obviously there's player availability um, and which players are available consistently. Um, we need to get back to that. Uh, and when we do, because I believe consistency is uh, one of the key pillars of success, so we got to get some consistency. The consistency, what we do have in the moment is our mentality, which is fantastic. I think we'll be the most mentally strong team getting through this adversity. Um, but we, we, need, we need full health or close to full health, um, and we're confident the results will start to turn in our favor. I want to get your thoughts, Coach, on, on Jorge, uh, Team of the Week. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, uh, had the goal late in Tulsa that mm -hmm. gave you guys a, a shot there at the end. Just your thoughts on what what it continues to do and what it continues to be. Yeah, as I stated, now coming year year two is he's the best two way ten in the league. I've also have to had to ask him to play multiple different positions based on necessity. And and what I love about Jorge is he's embraced it. You know, we, we had to play him as a six. He's never played there. We, we've had to play him in multiple positions. He's embraced it. He's thrived. Um, that's a sign of a top, top player. Cool. Thanks, Alan. Thank you all. Thank you.